backdrop, dude. It's a good, it's a good backdrop. No, that's a good backdrop. That's, that's a great backdrop. Guys, go ahead and pop it now, or you want to pop it later? You could start with it. No shirt? Yeah, I have no shirt on though. <laughs> Here with Dave of RL Exotics. Uh, you've been around and an intricate part of this industry for a really long time. Well, for a decent amount of time, you've been around, right? You've got your hands in quite a few species. Uh, you've worked with a lot of really big names and built a reputation for yourself. I just wanted to kind of ask you uh, a couple questions about the industry, where you see it going, um, and kind of kind of the perception that a lot of beginners have, and what your advice would be for people coming in. Well, that's really easy, actually, because I, I talk to a lot of new people because we do a lot of small shows. You know, the reality is, is um, I tell people not to chase. You know, you got to find your own direction. You got to find a species you're passionate about because if you don't have a passion for what you're working with, you can transform it into something great. Like if you're working with a species just because you think you can financially gain from it, you'll never truly look at it in an art form or in a building block. Um, you'll just do what somebody better than you is doing possibly and try to chase them to do it because you know you can make money on it. Um, you know, ball pythons, I always joke around, are the gateway drug of the industry. A lot of people say the same thing. It's a good entering thing too because it's a species that's very easy to work with. Um, it's a color palette more broad than anything else that we have in the industry and nothing will ever touch what ball pythons is doing now. But again, a lot of people when they get in, they may work heavy with ball pythons and, you know, get a good financial gain. But, you know, like me, I love my boas. I, I look at a boa and, you know, I can see the pastel lines. I can see possibilities. Sometimes with ball python projects, I don't have the eye like other people do. Um, even like with blue tongue skinks, the line breeding involved in that. I love that. I love anything line breeding because line breeding is a bitch. Am I allowed to say bitch? You can say whatever you want. Line breeding is tough. Um, you know, there's a lot of air there and it can take multiple generations and people phase out because really, you're only making a little more money when you make something a little better with line breeding, but just saying you got there makes me happy. And then what, what would you like to see change a little bit in the industry? Like, as far as what you see on the daily? I mean, I'll be honest, I think the direction right now in the industry is better than it's been in a long time. Um, I think the social media presence with a lot of breeders right now, putting things out there, um, I think a lot more of the bigger breeders now are more helpful than the old guys. I love the old guys, I love the old guys stories. But it was a little more cutthroat back then, and you might have got some misinformation because they don't want you to get ahead of them on certain wow. things. But um, no, I think the communication between the breeders and the public are a lot better now than ever before. Um, you know, even talking to Ryan McVeigh yesterday about like his product development, the things he has coming up in the hobby. Like, I honestly think that we're peaking right now. Like, I think we're better than we've ever been. Um, lots of new people coming to the hobby on the regular. The people who have been doing it for a long time have a really good foundation. Are doing really great stuff, and I feel like every time I come to the show, I see something new I just want to work with. Uh, House Raw. I haven't been watching it probably as close as I should have. Are we still doing it? Are we getting new episodes? Um, well, I took a little time off this past year. You know, my dad got sick, and I just it was it just wasn't fun to do anything public for a little while. So I took a little break. But we are trying to get into a rhythm of things. Um, we did unfortunately possibly lose Ben. Um, you know, Ben, you know, loves the hobby still, but, you know, he's got his full-time job, life's taking him in the direction he's going, so now it's me and Ryan. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I'll be honest, I really miss the conversations. Um, you know, even conversations I've had before with certain guys, I love having them again. Um, ideally, in a perfect world, we'll get rolling on it again. I'm going to talk to Ryan, but, you know, even Ryan now, with Luz and Ben as a partner, even his balance of time is a little tough. So, um, but I do talk to Ryan. I'm not going to say every day, but you know, we're keeping in contact. I got a list of people that have already said they want to come on and get doing it again. I got a lot of species we haven't talked about yet. So, in a perfect world, I really hope maybe in the next couple months we get more. I look forward to seeing it. I love, I love the crazy facial hair. Do you do beard competitions yet? I've never even done a mustache you, competition. You, you need, no, we need yeah. to. I gotta send you the information. There is actually 
the national competition this same weekend. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, but, or actually last week. So. The, the one over in like England? Yeah, they got that no, real big in one Pennsylvania. In so oh, okay. the U.S. Nationals was in Pennsylvania was the last weekend. And then they have one in New York. And, uh, like submit photos for it all the time or like place it. I've always been tempted and this beer thing, we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, I'll be honest, you know, Chad Holker's kind of in charge of all of this. Like he said grow a mullet and I was like, okay, I'll grow a mullet. You know, it seems like a great idea. I mean it's a short flow, but we're working on it. Um, you know, I, I don't know if he encouraged the beard though. The beard is because I I left my razor in like Florida and I was just too Jewish to buy another one and then it got long enough where I just fully committed. Just got it out of control. Just got there. Just I remember when it was just the mustache. Just that. Well, I've committed. I mean, this was supposed to be a monkey tail beard, but now I'm just going to go full beard. And then, of course, you know, this right here, like, oof. Like, I was semi attractive before this. Now I'm at least a 6.5. Like, and I'm willing to say that out loud. So, like I said, things are good. Like I said, I think the hobby's great. I think we've all had a really good couple years. You know, we all had a lot of financial gain with COVID. You know, go figure, that helped the hobby out. Um, helped out a lot of hobbies. Um, no, like I said, I see a lot of people going in the right direction. I, I see good things and where, yeah, we could tweak it a little bit. Yeah, everything's positive. Um, positive people, positive energy, good-looking animals. Even houseventry, I think, has gone way up on these guys. Absolutely. Um, like, you know, we're doing garter snakes right now. And, like, I'm about to set up bioactives with, like, little ponds with guppies in it. Like, just a constant food source and stuff. Like, I can't wait to have a wall of garter snakes to look for the next few years. So, Dave, brother, I appreciate your time. I hope you had a great show. Really good time. Man. Guys, make sure you go check him out at RL Exotics. All of his information will be down in the description below. And tell him that we sent you.